Okay, this is video two for the new Colossus. We're gonna talk about paraphrasing now. Um, and I told you that we would go line upon line, so I actually need to get rid of this slide and I need to go ahead and go into the poem. And so we've already talked about the title, we've already given, I've already given you some information, background information on Colossus and who he was and how he relates to the Statue of Liberty. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to go through this one line at a time. Uh, you should have your poem numbered. Uh, this should be one. Let me go ahead and do that really quick on my side. That way it's done. Okay. So I'm going to do some annotating on my actual poem because I would have to split the screen here and I don't think I'm able to do this with the program. But what I want you to do is I want you to write the answers on your TP cast paper. So you're going to have a box that says paraphrase. Okay. In your box that says paraphrase, it says the poem sentence by sentence. So the difference between paraphrase and summary Summary, you're doing a shortened, condensed version of what you just read, okay? Usually it's gonna take one sentence per paragraph to tell me what each paragraph is, and we already practice summary all the time when you do news articles. This is a little bit different. You have 14 lines of poem. You're gonna, in the poem, you're gonna have 14 lines of paraphrase, okay? Each line needs to be told in your own words. So you're not gonna combine anything or anything else. You're gonna actually write line for line what it means in your own words. So let's go ahead and start with number one. Um, it says not like the brazen, uh, this is not like the brazen giant of Greek fame. This is comparing the Statue of Liberty is not like she is her own she has her own as her own strength. Okay, so this is going to be the first line for me. This is going to be number one in the in the paraphrase. Okay, so number two. It says with conquering limbs, a stride from land to land, is still a description. Of the old Colossus. who stands on different lands. Okay. Now section number three, or sentence number three. Here at our sea wash sunset gate shall stand. So now we're reflecting back here being America. In America. Okay, at the gate, the gate's going to be located at Ellis Island, where predominantly all, I mean, it was a predominant amount of um, immigrants who came through Ellis Island. That's pretty much where the port was set up for you to become an American citizen. Okay, at the gate, uh, Statue of Liberty welcomes, or Statue of Liberty stands. Okay. Number four, a mighty woman with a torch whose flame. Number four is going to be a, a big woman, a giant woman, a strong woman. 
but I like that word strong. Is holding the guiding torch. Or guiding light. I love the image of light. Okay. Is the imprisoned lightning and her name? She is, she is this light. I, I love the image of the imprisoned lightning. Lightning is not something that you capture, but for some reason she's been compared to have captured that lightning in her torch. And it's so bright, it calls to all. So I really like this image of the light is incredibly bright. Okay. And her name, what is a name? Identity. Okay. Mother of exiles from her beacon hand. What is a mother? Someone who offers care, guidance, uh, comfort, peace. Exiles, people who've been kicked out of their land, thrown away, pushed away. So she is the mother of those, mother of the unwanted. Okay, beak in hand, she calls to them. Okay, um, number seven. Glows worldwide welcome, her mild eyes command. So two different things here. Worldwide welcome, so bright the world can see it. Um, her mild eyes command. Mild eyes are not going to be very commanding, so this is going to be kind of an, a, an oxymoron or, or um, an opposition of, of ideas here. You have a mild, eye, my, a mild eyes command, okay? It's a, she's a, she expects. She expects some action from the people who are coming here. She expects them to come to her, okay? The air-bridged harbor that Twin Cities frames. So you're looking at Twin Cities. New York has several Twin Cities. Um, you're looking at, you can look at Manhattan. You can look at New Jersey. You can look at New York, of course, and also Brooklyn. And I believe that this is talking about Brooklyn uh, because it was one of this, it was the second biggest um, air bridged harbor, meaning there is no bridge, is not a bridge between the two. Cities, the two powerful cities, okay? But she stands between. She stands for both. And all other land. Sorry if this is getting messy. Um, with silent lips, give me your tired, your poor... Oh, wait a minute. I missed one, didn't I? We need to go to nine. I think what I'm going to do is just drop down a little bit. Okay. So number nine, uh, it says, keep, comma, ancient lands, comma, your storied pomp, she cries. So 
To know what she's talking about, pomp is going to be the word that we're really going to look up. I'm not quite sure what that means. Um, so if you run into a word in another poem like this, you need to be looking up some words, okay? It'll help you with your understanding. Pomp at this time means extremely wealthy, stuck up, stubborn, uh, overly religious, whatever, just people who don't understand. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to forward on uh, a slide so that this stuff will still be there, but I'm going to go ahead and look at number 9 through 14 as this is the actual inscription on the monument. And I want to go ahead and, and just uh, push a slide forward. I still have the writings. If you need it to go back, go look at it. It's there. Um, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and look at number 9 here just to clear up some confusion. Keep ancient land, keep, comma, ancient lands, comma, your storied pomp. Now, the way that you can read this is you can say that the author is trying to say, ancient lands, keep your traditions. Or you can read this as a command, okay? And I choose to read it as a command because it has that comma between keep and ancient lands. It's because it's talking to those ancient lands probably England or some other land that may have exiled people from their communities, okay, and their cultures. So keep ancient land, your storied pomp. And like I said, pomp means wealthy. So she's saying keep those who are wealthy, and even undeserving. I don't know if undeserving is a good word. Uh, who are wealthy and uh, aristocratic. Let's do that. Okay. Storied pomp. People who are over, who overdo things, even in, in religion, okay? Cries she. Now she's cry, cry she with silent lips. I love that. It's all about her, it's all about her air, her attitude. Without saying a word. Okay. Give me your tired, your poor. Give me your unwanted. Send your unwanted. Let's do that. Your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Number 11. Your huddled masses huddle uh, groups of people, big groups of people. Okay. She's calling to all people. Who want to be free? Who desire to be free? Okay. I'm sorry. I don't want to do that. The wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Refuse is going to be your, um, your word. It's used here as a noun. Uh, the wretched refuse. Uh, simply, I know that because the is an adjective, article adjective, and wretched is a descriptor. And what is it describing but refuse? So we're looking at refuse as a noun, and that generally means trash, okay? Um, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Um, the extreme trash. Littering your lands. And I'm talking about people. The wrong kinds of people.
Okay. 13. Send these, the homeless, tempest tossed to me. Give me those who have been without home or direction. Okay. And finally, 14, I lift my lamp beside the golden door. I will guide the way to wealth. So you should have, um, and I love, I love the golden door image. Something that opens and has value. Okay, so now that we've paraphrased this, um, we understand what, we understand better what's being said. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to close this one out and start a new one for the next part of TPCast, which is going to be your connotation.